I'm going to take you through, to me, what is the most important relationship in creation, and that's between the conscious and subconscious, or what I'm going to call between the mother and child. The mother being the conscious mind who has choice. It can either care for the child or ignore it. So let's, let's suppose for now we move the terminology where the conscious mind is really the mother aspect of creation. And the subconscious is the child. Okay, my last uh, video was called Facing, Facing Your Parts of Self. And uh, this one, and that, that was like the system, hello, how you doing, let's get some agreements going on. And uh, you know, you did all, you're doing all this work just so that your inner child, your inner will, your inner woman, uh, in your heart and your body so they can all be recognized, accepted, accepted and embraced. So this is another level. Uh, and I, I opened it with uh, with Dr. Hugh Lin. Here's a little opening and then I'm going to show a clip of that later. He, he's, he's an amazing guy, you know, his backstory is uh, he was working in, a, in a, uh, a mental facility for criminal, uh, criminally insane people. And he did this thing where he did his, you know, ohonoponopono. He did that with those people. I, I don't even think he, he was, I don't think he was in a therapist, I don't think he was in a therapist capacity. I think he was just a, uh, what do you call it? Some kind of administrator or something, but he was reviewing these people, and then he would see them in the hall. I don't know how many there was in this wing. It was a wing of a mental institution. I don't know how many people it was. It was like uh, maybe 25, 30. How many people are in there? Could have been more. But anyway, in a matter of uh, a few months or a, year, a few years, each each person who would come in, they would look at their chart, and they had this image of this criminally insane person who did this and who did that and who did this and, and he took each one of those and he processed them in his in his will right just like your will so he took the judgment of that person oh this person is a criminally insane person who you know hurts themselves or hurts other people he took that and he processed it inside of himself and in the amount of time that he was there, they actually, he actually, those people would get better because he was not reflecting back to them that, that image, right? He embraced them. He, he, he would not allow the image of their damaged belief or damaged judgment to enter into him. And he would clean that out, clean that out, clean that out. So he was doing his release work, his onohopono, pono, work on every single person himself so that he was not reflecting back. He was not letting it in to stick to him and, it would, and therefore when they interacted with him there was, there was a cleanness there. They weren't, they were just a person. They weren't a criminally insane person who hurts people. That's not who they were. That's not who anybody is. So he ended up closing the whole wing down. All those people got better, and they left. This is kind of like a miraculous story, but I, the, re, the reason why it is, is because we're the same way. We're the same way. We, we have our family, our friends, our boss, our president, we have everybody, and we have these images inside of us, you know, of who they are. You know, oh, that person's crazy, or that person's rude, or that person's uh, greedy. Yeah? So there's a you can actually change you change your you, you you help and heal your family your friends your lovers and your boss by doing the work inside of yourself. Now, um, 
Dr. Lin, Dr. Hugh Lin, is a master. Okay, he is a he is like a, a in in the line of shamans who um, you know he inherited this. He was taught this, and he took it in a very simple way, and he practiced it faithfully for years and years, and he got very very good at. It clearing his emotional body, clearing the, the vibrational frequency and the message frequency, right? The thought and the feeling. He, he, would clear, he, would, he would take that in and clear it out. Take that in, clear it out. So, and in that he's very, very, very good. And this clip here that I, that I just showed you, and I'm going to show you the, whole, the full clip in a little while. And this clip here, what he does is <coughs> very amazing. Uh, you know, there's John Bradshaw. Now, you can. John Bradshaw did this a whole series on inner child work, championing the inner child, returning the inner child home, you know, homecoming, and uh, all that, right? You can still do John Bradshaw's work. I mean, there's still people out there who, who teach it. It's, it's kind of pricey. It's, it's uh, I think it's $50,000 for 10 days, something like that. To do the whole course of what he teaches. That's, but this is this is much more effective and it's free. Those are those two contra contradicting this. So inner child work by clearing your emotional body, and he starts it off by saying, you know, you're, you're, the most important thing is to connect your conscious mind to your subconscious, to connect. To connect your thoughts to your feelings, your adult to your child. And in this sample, he does a very amazing thing. What he does, what he does is he takes on the identity, your adult. He takes on the adult identity of a woman, a mother. And the inner child, which is your will, your emotional body, is the child. So there's the adult mother, the perfect, the perfect mother, the perfect parent. And this is what I showed in other videos about becoming the perfect parent, the perfect healer, or the uh, the super sleuth, or the or uh, you know I have the, this whole list of uh, people you can approach yourself with, or you can do the healing work with, you know, a rescuer or a, or a therapist or a shaman. Yeah, you can play these different roles. But in this in this video. What he's doing is, um, is, is he's playing the part of the, of the loving mother who loves the inner child. And uh, so I'm going to make comments on it, but this is, that is not language lessons of the heart. That is just a powerful section of what language lessons of the heart does. And I'm going to go into taking it four levels deeper and then 16 levels wider. Okay, four levels deeper and 16 wide because that's what language lessons of heart is all about. So we're, we're kind of in different things. The other thing is I changed one word from, uh, he, he says, I'm sorry. In his Ohonopono, he says, I, he says, you know, please forgive me, I'm sorry. But I changed I'm sorry to I apologize. And the reason why I did that is because I'm in contact with uh, Aboriginal healers from Australia and they explain this to me via Robbie Holtz if you say I'm sorry then you have to feel sorry and then so you're telling your, your will to feel the feeling of sorrow while you're apologizing so it's, it's kind of like I'm sorry that I'm sorry and you're sorry so it's better to say I, the word I apologize so that's the adult you saying, I apologize to the emotional being, your, your will. Other than that, it's the same. I love you, I apologize, please forgive me, and thank you. But this video is about embracing, okay? And that is embracing. And uh, so I'll let you watch the whole clip. But re when, he, when he says again in the next, when I show this next, remember he says, this is the most important thing in the history of humanity. And he's coming from a shaman's point of view, and it is the most important uh, change, shift 
ever in the history of humanity to where to take your conscious mind and connect it to the subconscious and to take the subconscious and connect it to the conscious in a healing, loving, caring atmosphere of love and cooperation. That has never or very seldom been done in the history of humanity. You just sort of relax with your eyes closed. I'm going to take you through, to me, what is the most important relationship in creation, and that's between the conscious and subconscious, or what I'm going to call between the mother and child. The mother being the conscious mind who has choice. It can either care for the child or ignore it. So let's, let's suppose for now we move the terminology where the conscious mind is really the mother aspect of creation. And the subconscious is the child. And it's the child who has all of the memory since creation and its burden. Burden. So if you have depression, it's the information in the child that's, that's experiencing the depression. So we want this relationship to work. So the first thing what you want to do is you want to do this really slowly. And the first thing you want to do is you want to say to this child, Oh, for the first time in creation, I'm, I am acknowledging your presence in me. So that's the first thing you, you it's important to do, is to acknowledge that you are aware that there is this being in you called the ch inner child. And you're talking to this inner child. You say, oh, wow. This is the first time that I'm aware that you are part of me. And then the, the next thing you want to say to it is something very simple. I love you. I love you. And then you acknowledge the fact that all of the hurts and pains are data kept in this child, and you say to this child very simply, I'm sorry. Please forgive me for all the accumulated memories that you experience as sorrow, as grieving, as pain. So you're talking to this child, acknowledging your responsibility that all of the woes that the child has that you have created, accepted, and accumulated, and that you would like to have it undone. So one of the processes, very simple to do, is you must always ask the child for permission. You must never do to the child without watch, asking for permission. So, this is what you want to do. You want to say to the child, please, please allow me to stroke the top of your head with love and concern. Just talk it. Please allow me to do this. And just do it then. Don't have to imagine anything. Just do it. So see yourself just stroking the top of the head of the child. And as you're stroking the top of the head of the child, you're saying to the child, I love you. Please forgive me for all of the accumulated woes that you now have stored in you. I am sorry. Again, I'm stepping back. This is the most important relationship because you can teach this child how to do the cleaning. And so you can put this child on automatic, but if you have not been acknowledging this child or really caring for it, it won't do it. So as you're stroking its head, I love you. Thank you for being part of me. And I'm sorry if I have been neglectful, if I'm not taking good care of you, if I have manipulated you. 
I'm sorry. And then you kind of take an inventory. You talk to the child where all the memories replay the problem. And you say to the child, if you don't mind, help, help me to let go. So you start at the top of your head. If you have any headaches, any back pains, you walk, you walk, you work down your body, you take an inventory, and you say to the child, oh, this is, I'm experiencing this headache. Please let go of the memories that are replaying this. I don't know what the memories are. I don't want to know what the memories are, but you know. And then we can offer it to the divinity through the superconscious. We can ask the divinity to set it free. So yeah, while you're doing this, you're stroking the head very gently. So now you're going to ask the child permission to hug it gently. Not bear hug. Bear hug frightens the child. So you're saying to the child, please allow me to hug you very gently. And when you do it, just do it. You don't have to imagine. I just hug the child gently. And you cradle the child in your arms and you talk to it. Thank you for being part of me. I love you. And I'm sorry for all the accumulated memories that you experience as pain and suffering. Please, please forgive me. And after you're done with that, you ask the child to give you its hand. Please give me your hand so that I can grasp it gently, gently stroking it. Whatever hand you want to give to me, please give it to me. So in your mind, you reach for the hand, you grasp it gently, gently stroking it. And again, you, you acknowledge that the child is part of you. Ah, thank you for being part of me. A part of me I've not paid very much attention to, and I'm sorry. Please, please forgive me. I love you. Then you might want to take another inventory. You might want to take it financially. And you say to the child, okay, it's just the memories that are the problem. So I'm asking you to let go. Please let go. And then you take an inventory. Whatever financial things that you're going through, any tax audits, you, you want to work on that. Anything that, that to do with the foreclosure of the home or anything, you're talking because the problem is not the foreclosure. The problem is not the finance. It's the memories replaying the woes. It's the mortgage on your soul, and you want this child who holds the mortgage to let it go. Please let go. Oh, we're having, we are overdrawn in the bank, or, or we have, we have been abusive to money. Whatever memories we have that we have been abusive to money, abusive to finance, abusive to the land. Please let go. And then you ask the child permission to hold its other hand. Please allow me to hold your other hand. And then you reach mentally for the other hand, and grasp it gently, gently stroking it. I want, to, I want you to be clear, this child is where all the problems start. So you want to be on a good relationship with this child so it will let go and let go on. So as you cradle and you stroke the hand, then you look at yourself and you take an inventory of what is going on in me that I'm having these, my experience of these problems with certain people. So you bring them up in your life and you go, okay, I don't know what the problem, I don't know what the memories are, but I notice that when I hang around with it, I'm annoyed and irritable and I don't know what that's all about, but it's memories in me and so please, you're talking to this child who is a memory bank, please let go. 
So this is the most important, essential relationship in all of creation between the mother and child. If the mother can win the child over, she's home free. The child will help her with the cleaning, will be willing to let go, will be willing to intuit into her and say to her, this is coming up, we better get to it. Thank you very much. Now you want to ask the child permission to hold its shoulders. Please allow me to hold your shoulders. And so you reach for the shoulders and you begin the dialogue again. This dialogue about love, acknowledging the presence of the child. I love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being part of me. I'm really grateful to know that there is you and me that I have not been caring for since the beginning of time. Please forgive me for ignoring you, not caring for you, causing you great harm and pain and sorrow. I'm sorry. I love you. Thank you for being part of me. And then you reach for its shoulders. And then you say to it, please allow me to hold your shoulders and give you unlimited love. Again, if you're looking for a business partner, this relationship with the child is the best business partner in creation. If the relationship between the mother and child works, it will work along for everything. So you're holding your shoulder and then you're looking to its eyes and you're festing up. I've ignored you. I've caused you pain and sorrow. I am sorry. Please, please forgive me. I love you. Thank you for being willing to let go so that you and I can be memory free. That you and I can walk hand in hand with the divinity and the Alma Kua into the light. So you can do this in the morning. You can do this in the evening. You can take a few minutes out of your busy schedule to get to get reconnected, relined up. And, and if you're willing to do this, then the inner child will be part will be a partner. So now I would like for you we're gonna do the seven rounds of the breathing. And so both feet on the floor, your your thumb and your forefinger touching. Both hands on the on the on your knees or on your in your lap, and um, do the breathing. And the breathing is a cleaning process the child will, enjoy, will appreciate. So one round is breathing. You breathe in for a count of seven. You hold for a count of seven. You exhale for a count of seven, and you hold for a count of seven. And you breathe seven rounds, please. Thank you very much. So, what's the problem? It's a memory replaying. Again, what Shakespeare calls four bemoaned on. You've had it before, and since you didn't get it the last time, now you're getting another crack at it. And what, how, do you, how do you have it erased? Well, you make an appeal to the divinity in you, who has this ability to take the memory and transform it, Purify it, release it, and then turn it into nothing, and then to replace that nothing with inspiration.
have it erased. Well, you make an appeal to the divinity in you who has this ability to take the memory and transform it, purify it, release it, and then turn it into nothing, and then to replace that nothing with inspiration. Well, this didn't turn out the way I thought it would. It's, it took a couple of days for spirit guides and all kind of people wanted to get in on the act. But uh, Dr. Hugh Lin, what uh, what he was doing was uh. He was talking to the inner child, which is uh, your, which is your will, your inner will. As an adult, you have a will, spirit, heart, will, and body. Spirit, heart, will, and body. But your inner child in your youth is still there. So the things that happened to you when you were a child, when you were a child that's usually what the most of the deepest imprints are. And what he did is uh, up here is, is to you as your best self. He did that as, as uh, you as, as your will, see? So this was your will talking to the inner child. So you're the ideal mother, the perfect mother talking to the deep feminine of your uh, of your emotional body and that's how he did that's really good but um, for today I'm going to concentrate a little bit on on the body now when you talk to these parts of the self they're uh, you know I love you I apologize please forgive me and thank you in uh, language lessons of the heart you have four times you know, instead of just one inner child, you have the body, the will, the heart, and spirit. But you also have it of the inner child. So when you're doing, if you're doing inner child work, you work with them. When you're doing just integration work with yourself or your adult stuff, adult relationships, you work with these guys, right? This, this group right here. But whatever you do, that's why I made this little thing whatever you do I want you to know that you affect everything so what what happens when you do your inner child work it affects it affects your adult will your adult will your higher self so we usually think of a higher self as like one being but you actually have four higher selves or, or four aspects of the higher self this higher self uh, The higher self right this includes your spirit guides but it, so the spirit guides are kind of shifted over here the higher self so there's you as your inner self your, your inner adult yeah but you also have your inner higher self and you also have your God self. So this is why uh, language lessons of the heart is so powerful because when you work with your body over here as, a, as your adult self and you work with your body, maybe you have body issues or you have body identity problems or whatever, when you when you work with them you're affecting you're affecting the whole thing same thing when you heal your will that's the deep feminine your emotional body that connects to all of these your inner child your adult self your higher self 
and God the mother of everything. And this is this is this is amazing. And this is why uh, this is why you you get so connected. And it's important to know that that uh, the the same pattern that you're having in your emotional body, your higher self has that holds that same pattern, and the mother of everything holds that same pattern. The issues that you have with heart, the issues you have with heart, you had maybe they started when you were a child, you have them as an adult, your higher self can only deal with those with the the parameters of this here, and your God heart, this, the your, your, your higher self as the, as the actual God uh, of heart, which is the Son of God and the Son of between the, the Son of the, the Father and the Mother, right? And the issues that you have with spirit, your inner child's mind, your mind, is the same issues that you have with your spirit guides and your higher self, and it's the same issues you have with God the Father. So, to say it in a, really quickly, that these guys here are higher and more advanced. And the good news is, the good news is, is that they've already done this healing work. The reason why Language Lessons of the Heart is filtering down onto Earth now is because they've already done a lot of their work. And what we're doing, and the higher selves higher self people are doing that avatars and all the angels and all those people in your higher self and your uh, your uh, these are spirit guides all these all these people they're all have there's a big pressure from all of them for the for you to take care of these this inner relationships and make it clean and straight and full of love and cooperation and uh, and that's what it's all about. So today, like I said, Dr. Hugh Lin, he, he was working on the will. But I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you how I would uh, connect to my body. So this is my inner adult. So this is me adult because I've done all this lot of this inner. I've done a lot of this inner child work, a lot, okay? So now I'm, I'm more or less, to be authentic, I'm kind of in my, uh, what do you call it, uh, adult self. And I'm influenced, I'm influenced by uh, these guys. So I'm going to talk today as an example uh, to my body because body gets left out so this embracing the uh, four parts is uh, embracing the four parts from the body. Yeah. So, as before, when I showed you in the other video, you just gather up the energy of your body put it in your hands. And this is also a two-way conversation, so the body can talk back. Hello, my beautiful body. I just wanted to say I love you so much. You're just wonderful. The body says, I love you too. We're having fun. So I can't even begin to tell you how much I love you. You've done, you've done so much for me. You're with me 24 hours a day. You're such a beautiful powerful being and we did a lot of a lot of stuff to a lot of stuff in this lifetime and I want to apologize well, I did a <laughs> doing construction the way I did it's like 40 years I asked you to stand on your feet and work hard along with doing heavy construction and you did it 
And also, I want to say thank you because you, everything, everything that you that I ever did, my romance, my uh, achievements, my spiritual experiences, I felt it inside my body. You're just fantastic. And please, please forgive me for, you know, when I drank too much and I uh, worked too hard, got exhausted, got out of balance, got sick. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I really worked hard to, to to stop that, but I know you took a beating, and even now you're not uh, you're not as the greatest as, as you could be. So thank you so much, thank you so much, thank you so much. You give me great dreams. Every spiritual experience I've ever had has been vibrated through you. Every connection I've had to spirit is a feeling first, and then and then it becomes you know, my mind gets it. That con feeling of connectedness. Body is uh, uh, this whole of creation is 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 uh, father manifestation. Is form. Is hits this house. This this being is is form. Uh, I just can't. Uh, you know, it's like nature. You're just like you're the, you're my connection to nature. You're always connected to Earth, and from that Earth connection, you connect to everything. And you take in the air. Every breath I take, you take in the air, and that connects me to the whole of the whole of the sky. So just breathing, I breathe in the sky. When I drink water, when you try to take water into you, you can through you I can feel the connection to all water and to the oceans. You know, and to the deep mother of herself, her emotions. So, forgive me for like screwing off for like 20 years and not staying on task and uh, going through some ups and downs and wild times. And uh, please help me any kind of judgments or denials or stuck energy that has to be released in a formal way. You let me know, you bring that up body says yeah we're uh, we're on a team we're, we're a team that's what body said we're a team and uh, we're going to keep this happening we're going to live a long time so this could go on you know you cannot overdo you cannot overdo talking to the parts of yourself giving them love giving your heart love because your heart has issues and it needs a certain kind of love and your will, your emotional body, most of language lessons of the heart has been about, you know, healing and, and evolving your emotional body. Because when she's happy, all the energy of pain and stress gets reflected from your will out into the body. So your body holds the stress and the uh, upsetness or whatever, pain, that's happening in your emotional body. Your body holds it. So there's a will-body polarity is really strong. And a lot of people have body issues. And those have got to go because your body is so magnetic. You're, you are the creation. You know, the body is the creation. It's the manifestation of you. And, and the, the more that love and acceptance and appreciation and, and uh, gratitude, thank you, thank you, thank you so much just to this body. And that gratitude is also goes out to your higher self and to the God self. It's the same. Yeah. So doing language less of the heart, talking to the parts of the self, it dissolves the difference, the separation between God out there, higher spirits over here, inner child in the past. It's all continuous. Uh, and with compassion, you know, that inner compassion there's, you can get, compassion comes from the top down and from the bottom up. And, and uh, that's what's miraculous about it. When you're, you're actually connecting your, your conscious mind to your subconscious, but they're not sub anything. It is the conscious mind that is subpar, subadequate. Yeah? Your heart is connected to the infinite heart of all creation. All of creation can reside within your heart. That is not sub anything. That's the crown and glory of creation is your own heart. And the mother of everything gives life and love and nurturing. So 
your will is pretty magnificent. There's nothing second class or subconscious about any of it. And uh, so this, that's what also what makes this the, the most difficult of processes, of the four processes, is because you have to be authentic to yourself. And this is, this is, and it took me months of doing this to become really authentic and having to do the emotional release, judgment and denial release, and really get that going so that they understood the process and they accepted the process. And then they would offer up me judgments and memories to be released and they would offer up me pain to be expressed and it would just become a conveyor belt. And then the miraculous thing is by doing this work, if it hasn't happened already, is that they will, they, your, your spirit, your heart, your will and body will take over this process of healing and evolving your emotion, but healing and evolving your whole being. And they are connected intimately and precisely, completely connected to God the Father, God the Mother, God the Heart of Creation, and God the Father of Manifestation. It's all the same. And so that's why there's so much excitement. This is why the shamans are excited. This is why the monks are excited. This is why the four-legged people are excited. This is why the spirit people are excited. This is why the higher self people are excited. This is why the masters are all lined up behind this. Because what you impact inside of you, that vibrational frequency goes all the way out. What's clear inside of you, clear it goes clear all the way out. So we're actually... Uh, those people who are doing language lesson of the heart are involved with uh, preparing earth and preparing humanity to become galactic citizens. That's what it is. You can't carry this old wounds and judgments and denials and, and stuff. You can't carry that into the, into the galactic neighborhood. It's just not going to happen. It won't be allowed to happen. So either you do it now voluntarily or you know, who knows, who knows what the other thing is going to happen. You either spend a lot more lifetimes learning how to do it, or, or uh, you'll be taken to some place where you can't evolve at your own pace. But the inner atmosphere of love cooperation and, and the f deep feeling of connectedness to all beings, that's what, that's what is all the ETs are do, do it, the whale people do it, the dolphin people do it. Sasquatch people do it. Trees are trees are connected. All, they're connected to the stars. They're connected to the earth. You know, so that's what it's all about: being connected and being authentic, and uh, not being second class, third class, higher class. You know, it's the same. That hierarchy stuff has got to go. That's some of the old programming that happened for humanity a long time ago. That, the hierarchy? No. God dwells within you as you. Yeah. The mother of everything permeates all of creation and that includes you. It's in everything. You are in everything and everything is in you. But to have that as a practical, daily, actual experience, that has never happened on planet Earth as far as I know. Not on the scale that it needs to happen. So, embracing the four parts of the, your four parts, that's like, do that a lot, because it's never been done before. You know, he talk about, I was going to talk about channelers. Channelers, people who channel, they're channeling from the higher realms, right? But you also exist in the, in the higher, in a, as a higher self. You're not chopped liver. You're not second rate. You're not a minor little nothing. You're as much a part of this creation, and you have and your parts, your spirit, your heart, your will and body, in their higher self, in your higher self, they are equal to any master, any teacher, any angel, any being, right? The same. And you know when Christ said, "I and my Father are one," that's what He's talking about. So, you, from your spirit, through your higher self, into the uh, God the Father, 
It's the same. One to one. One to one. Yeah? It's the same thing with the heart of creation. People like Jesus or Buddha or whoever you recognize as the heart of creation. Your heart is connected to them. So your heart is them and their heart is you. There's no difference, no separation. That's the whole, that, let that sink in. And to make that a reality, right, takes communication and, um, what do you call it? You know, appreciation is just, just do this. I love you, I apologize, and connect again and be authentic. So, you know, when you're authentic with your body, the body gets left out a lot, but when, you get, when you're authentic with your body and it connects you up to the form of creation, and what I mean by form of creation, there's the form of words, there's the form of marriage, there's the form of relationships, there's the form of a house, there's the form, you see where I'm going with this? The form of politics, there's the form of law. Everything has form to it. And so anything that exists has form, including the, uh, the, the beings in the higher selves and the God beings have form. And, the, and form comes from the Father manifestation, which is body. Yeah, there's the, the body of the universe. The universe has a form. Galaxies have a form. Stars have a form. Planets have a form. So the uh, Father of Manifestation. That's why I did. That's why I did. Uh, gave you the uh, embracing your four parts. I did it on body. The body is like amazing, and and you know. He's a he's equal equal to equal to God the Father the Spirit so and so are we it's this equalization it's not it's not God up here and we're down here no it's equal equal that's what that's the gift of talk what talking the parts of the self is and like I said if you have spirit guides and all that stuff you have these beings inside of you you can connect directly to source from your heart, or from your will, or from your body, or from your spirit. We're, we're kind of like, uh, what do they call that? Racist, sexist, elitist. We have this elite, like it's got to be God the Father. Well, that's uh, the light. Uh, the light, got to be the spirit light. Well, well, you know, hearts, no shabby. Uh, all of creation, God the Father fits inside of heart. And the mother of everything fits inside of heart. All of creation fit inside of heart. And if you don't ever heard under the masters say, everything is love. Everything is love, the light of love. So everything fits within heart. And when that's why it's kind of it's kind of, you know, important for you to talk to your heart. <laughs> Be with your heart. Breathe air into your heart. So I don't know, this guess four minutes. That, that's enough. There's the, the spirits, okay? And it took me three or four days. These spirits, there's all these spirits who want to get in on the act, okay? The tree spirits want to get on the act. The four-legged creatures want to get on the act. The earth spirits, which is I'm talking about the Sasquatch people and the, and the, the, uh, the great uh, archangels of the earth. There's earth spirits that are on archangel class spirits. There's uh, the shamans all around the world want to get in on this because because uh, because the movement has to be made by humans you know, the ones who are, need to change and I'm, I'm the one of the ones who need to change you might be one of the ones who need to change and the movement is made within me it's made within you and then you get lined up you get lined up with God the Father heart uh, mother of everything and the father of manifestation when, when I go talk about language lessons of the heart and the form of language lessons of the heart, the form of release, the form of emotional release, the form of a judgment and denial release, and the form of the empowerment, and the form of uh, something like that, the uh, polarity flip-flops. Where do you think I got these forms from? The forms come all the way up all the way back down. That's why they work so hard and there's energy behind it. I mean people have, people just like watching one or two videos and their whole life just changes. They're moving and uh, and you know that they, they're getting out of their rut. Watch, watching one video and all of a sudden this energy starts coming over them and their intent to heal gets strong. 
off they go, changing. It happens. Because there's an the energy that's behind this. Is uh, You could say, in a roundabout way, that this is God's final healing. He's done the healing work in advance. And he's, he, as, as spirit, has gone down and recovered his will, which is also Mother Earth, but the galactic will, the universal will, the mother of everything. Spirit has gone and connected, humbled himself and connected, and, uh, and released his judgments and denials and his angers and rage, and he released all that kind of stuff. That's what war is, is God's anger and rage. When we finish processing, there won't be any more war. Because the war is stopping in heaven. Started in heaven, came to earth. Now it's stopped in heaven. And that's going to come back down to earth. It's the internal war. Man over woman. Thought over feeling. You know, the white race, race over the black race. All that stuff will stop. Because unity consciousness is where we're going.